Okay, continuing with our HTML5 Canvas tutorials, today we're going to look at the very basics of loading images. Uh, so, I have a Vim open in my text editor here. As always, use whatever text editor uh, you feel comfortable with. Uh, and it's the same little step. We've been working with basic you know, HTML tags, and we have a canvas and then some script tags where we're going to be working. This is what it looks like up here. Nothing, because we have nothing displayed. Um, but we're going to load this image of my daughter into the canvas. That's the full size of it there. It's not very big. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with that. So we're going to go into our JavaScript tags here. And we're going to create some variables. So as always, probably could have left this in from a previous tutorial and save us some time, but it doesn't hurt to review. We're going to create uh, a variable called canvas. This is going to point to our element in our doc document. And um, we're going to get the element by ID. And the ID is right there. It's my canvas. This is obviously the ID can be whatever you want it to be uh, within reason. Obviously, avoid special characters, spaces, that sort of stuff. Um, but it is case sensitive to itself. So since we have a capital C up here, we want a capital C down there. And then we're going to end that with a semicolon. So now, whenever we recall, we call canvas, we're actually talking about this element up here. Uh, next, we're going to get the context of that element. So we're going to say var context. We're going to call it context. You can call it whatever you'd like. Canvas dot get context 2D because we're still working in 2D here. Uh, and then we're going to create our image uh, object. We're going to say var, and we'll call it image1. And we'll say that it is a new image. Whoops. OK. So let's see what we have so far. And I'm back. I had a little interruption there, but I am back now. And uh, we're going to continue. Uh, so let's review. Uh, we're creating uh, we're creating a variable. We're creating a canvas, which is actually just pointing to our HTML element of canvas. We're getting its context to D, and we're um, creating an image object, saying that it's a a new image. So let's uh, continue on here. Uh, let's see. So now what we need to do is we are going to create a little. Uh, function to load the image. So I'm going to call it image, we're going to say image1, which is our image object on load. So when that's loaded, what are we going to do? We're going to run this function. Uh, function and um, inside this function we're going to call one command. We're just going to load the image. We're going to say context. So we're looking at our canvas context and we're going to say draw image. So I said load image. We've already uh, loaded the image. Well, we're going to in a second here and at this point we're drawing the image. So we're going to say draw image 1 and then we need to give it a position. This is the top left corner. So right now I'm just going to say 0 comma 0. So it's top placed in the top left corner. Um, and now all we have to do is one more line. We're going to say image uh, one dot source equals, and the image I'm using is in the same folder. That's this one, same folder as my script. So all I have to do is give it its name, which is ember dot jpeg. We'll save that. Now, also, I want you to note that uh, you look up here, the image is 673 pixels by 897. Um, in a future tutorial, we're going to look at cropping and resizing images. But for right now, let's just up the size of our canvas to, we'll say, 1,200, 800 tall. And we'll save that. So it's all saved. So if I go back here and refresh, we have that image. Uh, so let's do this. Now you notice that I told it to go into the top left. And you'll notice there is a little white space here. And there isn't if I look at the image itself. 
Um, and that's just due to either the padding or the margin. I always get those two mixed up uh, of the canvas itself. So that would be something you would just in CSS. Uh, we could set uh, the the uh, margin for either the body or the canvas, probably the body since the canvas is inside the body. Uh, set those to zero. Uh, so actually, let, let's let's go ahead and do that. I think I think I know enough to be able to do that. Let's see. I'm going to say style. So this is where our CSS is going. Hopefully, you know a little bit of CSS. If not, don't worry too much. Um, there's other tutorials out there. We'll say look at our body. So this is looking at a body object and we're going to give it parameters here. We're going to say margin colon 0px for 0 pixels. That should be a 0 not an O. And don't forget the px. I always put numbers in there like I would put 0 and then go oh why isn't it working and I try all these different things and I realize I forgot the px for pixels. You can also do percentages and there's and other options there as well. But um, we're going to say zero because we want no, I did margin again, uh, no margin or padding around our body. And if I refresh this now, I think, there we go, we're up in the top left corner. So even though we're drawing to the top left corner of our canvas, the canvas is in the body and the body had some padding and margining, so we removed that. So don't get confused if you put it to zero, zero, and it's not in the top left of your screen. It is in the top left of your canvas. Um, so now let's look at uh, loading another image. And I'm going to do this in this tutorial just by repeating what we've already done. Um, but in a future tutorial, we're going to go over creating a function that will load so you don't have to retype everything every time. Basically, you just call that function and load in the images. So I'm just going to copy and paste for right now. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to say seven. And paste that there. And then I'll paste that there. And so we're just going to, I copied and paste. I'm going to say create another object. And really, I'd organize this a little bit better if I was to do it this way. But in real world scenario, I you once again use a function. Um, but we're going to go create image two. It's a image. And then we're going to say when image two is loaded, we're going to load image one. We need to give it a source. Now, we're not going to do the same image. I am going to load both to the top left corner, but I'm going to use this image, which I've used before. If you just Google search Tux, it comes up. I figure we're going to get into some gaming stuff eventually with Canvas, so why not use Tux dressed as Mario? So I'll paste that URL in there. If I come up here and refresh, I did something wrong. Oh, that's the problem. I uh, didn't change this. When you copy and paste, you got to make sure you change what you need to change. Because basically what I was doing there was I renamed uh, image one source that. So it was drawing that picture for image one and nothing for image two. So there we go. We have tux over top of ember there. Now you might be saying you can do that with basic HTML and, um, and CSS. And yes, you can. But once you get into more advanced stuff, uh, you're going to definitely want to know how to do this with the canvas, especially if you plan on making games. You don't need canvas for some basic games and animations. Obviously, you can just use CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. But the canvas, uh, I, as far as I know, I think that it does a better job of rendering stuff, so it will use less system resources. Don't quote me on that. But it gives you other options, too, because like you can actually now save this as an image. You can write in your script to create a URL for this image, so you can superimpose stuff and save the image where I don't, as far as my knowledge goes, with um, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, I could do this and make it look like this, but I can't save that as an image. You know, I could save the whole page as an HTML and whatever, but you can actually save this as a, a uh, PNG or a JPEG, and uh, possibly, I'm pretty sure, even upload it to a server. Uh, I have not learned how to do that yet, but uh, it'd be nice to be able to you know, create stuff inside here and then save it as an image. Anyway, that is the basics. We'll quickly review here just for fun. Uh, we're creating our canvas object and getting the context of that. Then we're creating our first image object. And um, really, I think this, it would make more sense to me if I put this up here. 
but we're saying that when image one is loaded, lo you know, draw the image. What image are you going to draw? It's this one. And then we're going to create image two when it's loaded load this image and of course as I said you got the top left here so let's move our tux image over a hundred pixels and down a hundred pixels and we will refresh this so now you can see he's moved over a little bit and of course you can animate that which is what we'll get into in a later tutorial so this is the very basics of loading images into a uh, canvas tutorial uh, into a canvas uh, for HTML5. I did want to mention, in case you're unfamiliar, this image of Tux seen here is a PNG with an alpha layer, and that's why the background is transparent. Obviously, if it's a JPEG, uh, it's going to have some sort of background because JPEGs don't support uh, trans uh, alpha channels. Although I would not be surprised, and I would probably bet money that HTML5 Canvas could remove colors and kind of create an alpha channel, just like you would in you know older days, like if you were ever into like editing Doom or anything like that. Uh, it's kind of like a blue screen effect. We would fill in the background there, but it's always better to use alpha channels if you can, and we can with PNGs, so why not? But you probably do have that option in other cases, just to mention it. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, I hope you uh, continue watching these HTML uh, Canvas tutorials. I'm having fun making them. And, uh, and next week we'll look at uh, resizing and probably cropping images. And then uh, from there move on to creating that function to load multiple images. Then we'll do a few other basic stuff and then we'll start moving into a little more advanced stuff and start using uh, some JavaScript uh, uh, libraries or modules or whatever you call them when they're JavaScript um, to do some fancier things with images and text and paths and lines and all the stuff we've been learning. But for now, please visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris of the K. You can search my videos and playlists there, or you can always just check out my YouTube channel. I thank you for watching, and I hope that you have a great day.